candidacy pathway process prepares people who each have unique gifts and experiences for the vocation of ministry. In the United Church of Canada, we celebrate the diversity of expressions of ministry leadership. We affirm that some are called to the vocation of ministry and that ministry leadership that is intentionally set apart is essential for the church to participate in God's hope for the world. In Candidacy Pathway, individuals will journey in similar but sometimes different ways toward commissioning, ordination, or recognition. There are seven phases that guide the Candidacy Pathway process. They are call forth, identify, accompany, equip, assess, authorize, and celebrate. Candidacy boards will work with each applicant to ensure that the principles and requirements of the seven phases are implemented and followed. Candidacy boards are commissions of the Board of Vocation. The membership of the candidacy boards includes a balance of diaconal, ordained, and lay members of the United Church of Canada and reflects the diversity of an intercultural church. The Indigenous Church has also named a candidacy board. Anyone who would prefer to be interviewed in French can be. Each candidacy board is supported by an Office of Vocation Minister. I am Adam Hall and I'm a member of the Prairie Candidacy Board. I'm Jane Graham. I am on the North and Central Ontario uh, Candidacy Board. I am Simbarashe Mashara from Atlantic Canada Candidates Board. Hi, I'm Heidi Koscheck and I'm with the Mountain Candidacy Board. Hello, my name is Emmanuel Kwadro Ufori. I am with the Southwestern Ontario Candidacy Board. Anine Bojo, known in Indigenous cause, my name is Reverend Evan Smith and I am on the Provisional Indigenous Candidacy Board. I am Karen Valley, Office of Vocation Minister for Quebec and East Ontario. Candidacy Boards are responsible for approving an applicant for candidacy, determining a candidate's fitness and readiness for accreditation to ministry, overseeing the candidacy pathway process, terminating candidacy if required. I feel that we need to modernize some of the things that, that we are doing. It's a new experience and a new way of being the church, a new way of working with students. What I like in this board is that it draws in depth and breadth and skill and experience and diversity from different places, not only in the region but at the national level. What I and my other uh, candidacy board members are excited about is the flexibility of this process, um, that it is about the individual, that not everybody has to fit into one structure, that it can be uh, whatever it needs to be. Applicants and candidates are responsible for following the direction of the candidacy board. The process is designed to hold individuals responsible and accountable for fulfilling the requirements in a proactive, timely, and professional manner. To become a candidate for a designated lay ministry, diaconal or ordained ministry, a person must articulate their call, complete an application, and request an interview with a candidacy board. I accepted the calling to be on this board because I think it's really important for us to find ways to support our Indigenous students in good ways to help them to become the leaders that our communities need so desperately. I've been part of one of the groups trialing the process and we found it to be a process that is very friendly to students, very positive and affirming. I'm hoping that the Lord will help us as we pray together to discern who the Lord is calling to be uh, part of the leadership of the United Church at this point in time in our lives. At the interview, a person will be assessed for promise and suitability for candidacy. In order to be made a candidate, the applicant must be a member and have been actively involved in the United Church of Canada for the last 24 months. They must have completed mandatory trainings and agree to become a member of the United Church Pension Plan and Group Insurance Plan upon commissioning, ordination, and recognition. At various points, they will also need to complete a vocational assessment, create a circle of accompaniment, complete theological education, and supervise ministry education as necessary for their stream of ministry. We celebrate that God calls individuals with varying gifts and abilities specifically to the vocation of ministry. Ministers faithfully lead the church in living out its purpose for the sake of a broken world. 
If you would like to get started on the candidacy pathway or know someone who would, please check out our website. We are not alone. We live in God's world, and God's world needs leaders. I'd just like to say in my Anishinaabemowin language, I pray that the Creator blesses all of the members of the Office of Vocation as we fulfill this calling in our duties and really discern what the work of God is for our communities of faith. Amen.